of the new year. It is the first new year in our new building. Uh, it is step one of the growth track. It is small group signups, and we have a brand new series starting right now. It's a good day, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. Okay, so uh, habits. We're, we're starting this series about habits and why are habits so important? We all have habits, don't we? Some habits are good. Some habits are bad, right? Like some habits, some habits expand our waistline and lower our bank account, while other habits do the opposite. So, so we need to think about our habits, don't we? Habits can lead us and direct us. It, see, we have habits. And, and what we can really think about is this, is that what we do repeatedly determines who we become, right? What we do repeat, or, or, or you could say it like this, we form habits, but eventually those habits form us. So what we do really creates who we are becoming. So, so when we start to create good habits, we become better. We, we, in, in 2018, I don't know any person that's like, yeah, you know what, I want to get worse this year. Anybody saying that? No, no, everybody's saying, you know what, I want to do something different. I want to do something more. I want to go uphill. I want to have these uphill habits. So the thesis of this kind of series is this. Uh, and, and, and so if you're taking notes, you can write this kind of stuff down. Most people have uphill hopes and downhill habits. Most people have uphill hopes. I want to do better. I want to get skinnier. I want to be healthier. I want to save some money. I want to get out of debt. But our habits lead us the opposite direction, right? Anybody else notice that in life? Uphill hopes. Hope is good, isn't it? But sometimes we have these downhill habits that take us to places we don't want to go. So what we want to do through this series is flip it. We want to keep our uphill hopes, but we want to have some uphill habits to go with it. And so here's my disclaimer for the entire series. You guys ready for this? It ain't easy. Everything that is worthwhile is uphill. Everything that is worthwhile, that is worth investing in, there's going to be a little bit of work behind it. Because if it were easy, we'd already be doing it, wouldn't we? Because our life, typically, we do the things that are easier. We do the things that come with a little less resistance. We do the things that are downhill, right? That's the path of least resistance. But if we're going to make a change, we're going to have to break the norm, and we're going to have to go up hill. Everybody agree with me? All right, so today what I'm going to do is before I give you the very first habit, I want to give you three things that are necessary so that we can uh, uh, face these habits and put them into practice, so that we, that we can take them and put them into place. And so we have to prepare ourselves to get ready for that. You guys want to get ready for these habits with me? Okay, the first one, the first thing we need to do is we need to have hope for the future. Hope for the future. If you are hopeless, if you don't have hope in any given area of your life, that area of your life, it's impossible to change. Did you know that? You need hope. If, if, if I talk about finances or marriage or relationships or different situations, and, and you're going, sorry, TJ, that one can't happen, then it's not going to happen. You need hope. You need that light at the end of the tunnel to make sure that it is even possible in your life. It doesn't matter what habit I give you if you don't have hope. It's not possible. You must have hope, and hope comes from God. And isn't it a good gift from God when you have hope in a situation? I was teaching Wednesday night here at our first Wednesday service, which we do the first Wednesday of every month at 7 o'clock with communion and everything. And I highly encourage you to be a part of it. But I was teaching Wednesday night about hope just a little bit. And, 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 and I referenced a movie that I've never seen. It's called Hope Floats. Anybody seen that movie? Not me. I've never seen it. I have no idea what it's about. But the title means something to me. Hope Floats. Because hope does float. Hope, hope, hope brings you to the surface. See, if you're, if you're living in the shallows, you, you're splashing and playing in the water or whatever, right? Like, it, you can reach the bottom. You don't need hope. But how many of you know life sometimes gets deeper than you can stand? I can't touch anymore. It, I'm, 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 I'm over the abyss. It's deep. My despair is deep. My anxiety is deep. Hope brings you to the surface again. Hope floats. So it doesn't matter how deep it is. If you have hope, you can make it, right? Hope brings you to the top. So that's what I want for every single one of us. Look what it says in the book of, uh, sorry, 2 Corinthians. 
It says, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. That's hope, isn't it? You you can be hard pressed, but not crushed. And then he says, we are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. He has absolute hope that God is with him, walking with him, journeying with him. Struck down, but we're not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. We carry around the hope of Jesus with us so that, so that in any given situation, we can have hope. We, 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 we can have something that carries us through the hardest of times. Pressed, not crushed. Perplexed, not despaired. Persecuted, not abandoned by my God. How about you? That sounds like hope, doesn't it? All right, the second thing we need, if we're going to uh, put these practices, these things into practice, is we need repentance from the past. Repentance from the past. Which means we need to do things differently. I've been doing it one way, I need to repent, and I need to do it a different way. Do you know the word repent means to turn around? To go a different direction? Some of you who may have spent some time in, 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 in recovery have heard the the story of my life in five chapters. Chapter one, I go for a walk and I fall in a deep, dark hole and it takes me a long time to get out. Chapter two, I go on a walk and I fall in that same deep, dark hole and it takes me a really long time to get out. Chapter three, I go on a walk. I see the hole, but I get too close and I fall in and it takes me a long time to get out. Chapter four, I go on a walk, I see the hole, and I go around it. Chapter five, I walk down a different street. See, we need to get to chapter five, don't we? But how many of our resolutions are like chapter four? I see the hole, I'm just gonna walk around. What if if we changed direction? What if we did things just differently? Have we ever thought about that before? Let's not walk down the holy street. Let's go down somewhere else, go in a different direction with our life. If we're going to make sure that these habits stick in our life, we need to repent. We need to turn. Look at Paul says. He says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. What's he doing? He says, I'm going a different direction. I'm, I'm changing. I'm looking differently at life. Forgetting what is behind. And and I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I'm I'm moving in a different direction. I'm going in a different way. I want to look differently at life. I've repented. I've turned. Third thing is the formation of uphill habits. If we want to change, we got to embrace these. We need to form them. We call them uphill habits, but really what are they? They're just godly habits. They're habits that God has given us. Things that we need to put into our life. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, fix your attention on God. Fix your attention on him. You want to see your life different? You want to see your life change? Take your attention off anything else and put it onto God. You'll be changed from the inside out. So many times we start on the outside, hoping that it'll change something on the inside. But you know what? God wants you to change on the inside. He wants to help you change on the inside so that the outside can be different. Readily recognize that he want what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of maturity, God brings the best out of you and develops well-formed maturity in you. You know what I'd love to see? I'd love to see us surrender to God And at the start of 2019, one year from today, we look back and go, I don't even recognize the person I used to be. Not because I'm so much worse, but because I'm so much better. Because I've changed from the inside out. Because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, living according to the immaturity of the culture around me, but I'm creating a new culture because of what God is doing inside of me. And I'm growing in my life and my faith. Is that what you guys want for your life in 2018? That's what I want. That's how we get ready for this year. We, we, we change our direction. We surrender to God. We put him in first place. We do these things. And when we do these things, our life will start to take a different course. No longer are we reacting to the holes in the ground. We're just going to go a different direction. It's not just about a resolution, 
but we're changing our life. We're changing who we are because of God and his strength. And it may seem impossible, but you know what? His hope is ever enduring, ever enduring. So you guys ready for the first habit? Nope, you're not, not at all. You guys ready for the first habit? Yes, all right, cool. All right, let's do this. Habit number one. Habit number one is, uh, sorry, habit, there we go, here we go in the notes. Habit number one, focus on what I do first. Focus on what I do first. Did you know you can tell a lot about a person based on what they do first? When, when they wake up in the morning, what's the first thing they do? You can tell a lot about a person the first thing they do in the morning, right? When, when, they, when they get bad news, what's the first thing they do? When they get angry, how, what's their reaction? When they get a paycheck, what's the first thing they spend their money on? Like, like you can find out so much about a person by what they do first. And in your life, you can find out a lot about you and where your direction's gonna be by what you do first. Because first things have power. And if we wanna start to change 2018, we need to focus on what we do first. We, 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 need, to, we need to figure out what's happening in our life and, 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 and put the first things first. It, see, the power, the Bible is, is throughout, cover to cover, has this principle of first laid out in it. Did you know that? And everything in there points to putting one thing first. So if you're taking notes, you can write this down. Number one, the first thing we put first is always God. We always put God first. And I know what you're thinking. Uh, duh, we're in church, TJ. That's what you're gonna say. Put God first. But this isn't a church thing. This is just being a Christian. L l let me say something that may come off as a little harsh, but, but I'm not trying to be harsh. If God is in your life, but he is not first place in your life, he's not really in your life. If God's in your life, but he's not first place in your life, he's not really in your life. Because God cannot take any other place. He's first. Like, that's how it is. He can't accept second place because he's always first. So if he's not first in your life, he's not in your life. It's called the, get a theological term, the preeminence of God. Which means he's first place in all things. Which means he's also first place in the love relationship between you and him. He loved you first. The book of Romans tells us that while we're still sinners, Christ died for us. While we weren't even thinking about him. Before we were ever around, Christ was thinking of you. He gave first. And in 2018, if we are going to focus on what we put first, we have to focus on this one thing, putting God first. First four words of the Bible. You guys ready for this? Genesis chapter one, verse one. In the beginning, God. Now, many of you know how to finish that sentence. God created the heavens and the earth, right? But what if we took these four words and, and applied them to our life? In every situation, every relationship, every career move, every financial decision, everything. In the beginning, God. What if that was a motto for 2018 for you? When it comes to the way I raise my kids, <laughs> I gotta put God at the beginning of it. In, in, the, in the way I use my money, I gotta put God right at the top. In the way I schedule my time, my effort, my energy, in the beginning, God. That'd be a great motto, wouldn't it? It, it would change the way you look at the world. It would change the way you approach life. Also in uh, the, the book, oh, sorry, no, the, not the book of Genesis, the book of Exodus, the ne very next book. Uh, have you guys ever heard of God's top 10 called the 10 commandments? Yeah, yeah, everybody here got 10 commandments? Okay, good, good, good. The very first commandment speaks to putting God first. Look at this. And God spoke these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. And then look at this. You shall have no other little g gods before me. L L little g. They're not real gods. They're just things you love more than God. God doesn't mind you having other loves, but he doesn't want you to have any loves before him. You can, you can love stuff, but let's make sure that he's number one. Let's put him first. Let's embrace him. 
It's the first commandment on the Ten Commandments is, putting, is about putting him first. You think he cares about this just a little bit? Just a little bit. And in 2018, man, I, I, I pray that this would be the top of your list. God, how can I put you first? Number two, second thing we can do with this habit is give God the first of everything. Give God the first of everything. And some of you thought, oh, he's gonna talk about tithing, right? But I didn't say give God the first of tithing. And tithe. I said give the first of everything. And, and perhaps our concept of tithing is actually not super accurate. Maybe when we see, hear the tithe, we think about money only. But could it possibly be that God just wants a little bit of everything? He, he wants a, a tithe of everything. Now the word tithe, if you translate it, means one-tenth. And that's a very easy to apply to our finance, finances. But what about everything else? See, the tithe isn't just a 10%, it's the first 10%. And what if we took the first of everything and just gave it to God? The first of our thoughts, the first of our energy, the first of our schedule and our calendar, the first of, of course, our finances. But what if, what if we did that? Look what it says uh, in the book of Leviticus. It says, a tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees belongs to the Lord, it is holy to the Lord. So the first of everything belongs to him. The first of everything. Now, I don't know if you have like grain and fruit trees or whatever. Uh, I don't. Um, but I have a lot of other things that I produce with my life. And, and I think if, if I gave the first to him, that would mean something. Don't you think that? Look what it says uh, in, in the book of Deuteronomy. It says, the purpose of tithing or giving first is to teach you to always put God in first place in your life. The, the par part of what we do Part of what we're learning from God is just how to put him in first place. This, this habit of, of putting the first things first, making sure what we do first is vitally important, is, is not about making sure we are healthy, but that we have a healthy order of priorities. So we can fully understand and, and embrace, oh God, you're number one. And this, this isn't like a, the short church thing. This is just being a Christian thing, right? It doesn't matter how many times you come to church on a Sunday, complete the growth track, go to your small group every week, tie the tenth of everything you make. That doesn't make you a Christian. What makes you a Christian is saying, God, you're number one, I'm number two. That's it. That's what makes you a Christian. You can do all those other things, and I think they will help you being in church every Sunday. Giving of yourself, giving of your life, serving, joining a small group. Those things will radically help you grow, like, like incredibly. But that's not what makes you a Christian. What makes you a Christian is giving of yourself first to him and letting him set the course and making him the priority. And when we do that, we get to learn, oh, 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 God, you're first place. Oh, your, your ways are better than my ways. Oh, your, your, your ways are higher than my ways. Does that make sense to everybody? All right, so, so, so how do you do this? How do you do this? Well, the first thing we do is we, we give God the first of our year. Are we at the beginning of the year? Yes. So how do you give God the first of your year? Well, we as a church are starting 21 days of prayer today. Today. And, and we do this in August and January. And, and so we starting, we're starting to pray now. And, and we're going to pray tomorrow morning, 7 to 8 a.m. in this room. We're going to do that Monday through Friday. And then on Saturdays, 7 to 8 p.m., we're going to pray in this room. And I encourage you to be a part of it. This is a way that we give God the first part of our year. And we're not doing it so that we can get something from God. We're not gonna come and beg God for 21 days for something. We're gonna go, God, you're in first place for 21 days. I'm gonna establish it as a habit that you are number one. And so if you wanna be a part of this, which I encourage every single one of you to do it, but if you want to get some reminders like when we actually are having our prayer times, what prayer objectives we have during each day, um, you can text praying, the word praying, to 97,000, 97,000. And, and you'll get a text update on, on some of that. Does that make sense to everybody? So, so I know if you're like me, you're going, when was that again? Nine to, wait, no, seven to where? Huh? What, date, what dates are we doing that again? Like, I understand. It's so hard. If you text that, we'll give you a reminder on when it is and where it is and what we're praying for throughout that season. Deal? Deal. Okay. Now, in this 21 days, we actually add on to prayer. So we do it in August and January. We're actually adding on to it fasting. So today is the first day of my fast. Um, and, and, and if you want to join in, today's your first day too. 
And I encourage all of you to do something. There, there, there's, there's four types of fasting that I want to cover really quickly, um, just so that we're kind of on the same page. And if you want more resources, there are great resources out there. Um, so that you, books to read, websites, all kinds of stuff uh, when it comes to fasting. But there's four types. The first one is a, uh, a, to, uh, a complete fast. A complete fast. Now, a complete fast is where you don't eat. <laughs> Pretty simple, right? <laughs> what are the rules? <laughs> you don't eat food. That's it. Now, I encourage you, don't be here and go, cool, I'm going to do that one. 21 days, bring it on. Um, you might want, might want to start slower than that if you've never done it before. So, so, so that's an option that you could do for maybe uh, shorter periods of time, consulting doctors. Some of you guys have health restrictions and you, that's not even possible, right? So, so the next one um, is, is a selective fast where you don't eat certain things for a certain period. So you eat food, you just don't eat all kinds of food. An example of that would be called a Daniel fast. Or maybe you just say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to, no sugar, no sweets for 21 days. Um, or <laughs> some of you guys are going, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it, but I'm not going to be happy about it. I'm, I'm fasting broccoli for 21 days, right? <laughs> so, but all of us, all of us, all of us can do this one. All of us can go, you know what, no coffee, no whatever. For me, that's easy because I'm drinking coffee. See, I could fast coffee every year and it'd be fine. You know, it'd be, it'd be more of a, a labor for me to drink coffee every day. It'd be so terrible, you people with your coffee. All right, so anyway, so, but that's a selective fast. It's, it's, it's removing something from our life. And then when we hunger or thirst for that thing, we're reminded, oh, I need to hunger and thirst for God in that way as well. The, the, the third type is a partial fast where you eat all the foods and drink all the drinks, but you, you take meals off. Where you're like, I'm not going to do lunch, or I'm not going to do dinner. Or a, like a traditional Jewish fast is where you eat the evening meal, but then you fast until the next evening meal. Does that make sense? So, so you can do something that's, a, that's a, a partial fast. And then the last one, the, this is the one that every single one of us can, should do and could do in this next 21 days, is a soul fast. Soul fast. You've you got you to watch what comes into your soul. What are the thoughts, the feelings that are coming into my mind and my heart? What, what kind of sources of input am I allowing in? Do, do, do I need to get off social media for 21 days? Do, do I need to delete the Facebook app for a while or permanently, right? Like, do, do I need to turn off the news? Lord, help us turning off the news. Do, do, do I need to, to listen to God more than Fox and CNN? Like, like when we do a soul fast, if, if, we, if we were careful as to what we put into our soul, into our heart, I'm, I'm promising you, it'll start your year right. It, it'll change you. So, so maybe turn off the TV or deleting those apps off your phone for this next season would just absolutely radically change how you look at the world around you for the better. So much for the better. So all of us can fast in some way, right? I, I, I believe we all can. All right, so that's giving the first of our year. That's why we fast. That's why we do these things. The second one is um, the first of my month. This is a scheduling and a budgeting way to give to God. Scheduling. I, I'm, I'm going to make sure that my schedule doesn't push God out of the equation. I'm going to make sure Sundays I'm ready to go to church, right? I'm going to make sure that my small group is a priority. I'm going to make sure spending time with my spouse and my family a priority. I'm going I'm to put those things in first so that my schedule doesn't, doesn't push me into downhill habits, but actually schedule uphill habits. And it's a budgeting thing. Leah and I sit down at the beginning of each month and we talk about what's the budget going to be. We're, we're, and of course, the first thing we do is give. We, we don't do, we, we make sure that, that tithing, 10%, goes right off the top, right from the very beginning. It's a way that we say, God, you, God, are in charge. You are in first place of my life, my schedule, and my budget. Everything I am is from, everything I have is from you. So everything I am, I give back to you. And I, and I show him that by giving first. I, I schedule him first. The, the next one is the first of my week, which of course is church, Right? Coming, coming to church is, is great, but it's more than just church, just an hour on a Sunday. It's a Sabbath. It's a day of rest. I know it's hard for some of us to believe that a day off can actually help us be more productive the other six days, but I'm telling you right now, one day of rest where you give that day to God, where you don't produce anything, he can do more in the six days than you could do seven without him. That day of rest is so important. And that's how we honor God. And, and, and the early Christians, um, the, the Sabbath was on a Saturday. They moved it to a Sunday for two reasons. One, it was uh, the resurrection of Jesus was on a Sunday. 
And then number two, they wanted to start their day off with connecting with God. They wanna start their day with, with giving him. The, the first day of the week was for him. And so they would set that aside as rest and worship to God. That's an important thing for us. We'll find a lot of health and structure in that. And then the last one is the first of my day. I bet you could guess what that one was, right? First of my day, first of my day. Here's, here's what I do the first thing every morning. I, I wake up, I roll over and I, I grab my phone. I don't have my phone up here with me. So we'll pretend that this is a giant Android phone for a second. Okay, and, and so on my, on my phone, I've set it up so that when I grab it, uh, it, I, it turns on and then I swipe to the right and it's got the verse of the day right there, okay? And, and I, the first thing I do is I read the verse of the day and, and, and I say a quick little prayer to apply it to my life. God, help me put this principle into practice. Help me to do what your word has said. Or it, if it talks about creativity, God, make, make me creative. If it's submission, God, I submit to you. Like whatever the verse of the day is, I do that. So, so I've set up my phone so that I can swipe right for, for Jesus, okay? Some of you guys think that's funny. Some of you guys have no idea what I'm talking about. That's okay. That's okay. But that's what I do. That's the first thing every single morning. That's what I do. And I, think, I, I encourage you, what you do first determines the course of your life. What you do first determines the direction of where you're going to go. What you do first this year will determine what the rest of the year looks like. We do first every single day. We'll determine what the day looks like. You could read your Bible anytime, but I'm telling you, if you get it in there first, it's gonna change your mindset. If you, if you talk to God first, it's gonna change your mindset. Instead of saying, good Lord, it's morning, you say, good morning, Lord, right? Do one of those. That was my cheesy preacher moment just for you guys. It's right there, okay. All right, and the third thing, third thing is expect God to bless the rest. Give him first, give him first, give him first. And the rest... God, I expect you to just walk and journey with me. I expect to, to, to have a relationship with you, to grow with you, to, to just, just walk out this life with you. Look what it says in the book of Proverbs. He says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits, the very first thing of all your crops. And then the, your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. I don't know if you have barns and vats. I don't. Um, but, I, but I have a lot of other things that could use some blessing, right? I have a lot of other areas that, that I need God's help in. And, 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 and I'm telling you, I don't, I don't know how he does it. But when you put him first, he kind of fixes the rest. I really don't know how. I just know that it's him. And a lot of people go, well, that's just a coincidence. Well, coincidences happen when I put him first. And they don't happen when I don't put him first. And that's the truth. And I'm, I'm not exactly sure how he, how he arranges it all and how he does it all, but I know that when I put my first fruits into him, of my life, my thought, my mind, my energy, my finances, everything, he's, he starts to arrange the rest. What would your year look like? How would your life change if you started putting him first? If you took 21 days and said, God, I'm yours. God, I want, I want what you have for me. How, how, how would your life look different? Can I tell you? It'd be more joy. Probably be more peace. You'd walk with a new understanding of grace. And the favor of God would follow you. I think, I think that's a good thing, right? So here's, here's what I would ask from all of you. For the next 21 days, will you participate in some way? You, you may not even be the most spiritual person or you don't even know who God is right now. For the next 21 days, can you just seek him? Can, can, you, can, you, can you say, you know what, I'm just gonna turn off the TV for a while. Or God, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take my lunch break and I'm not gonna eat. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna ask you for, to, to know you. I'm just gonna reveal yourself to me. I'm gonna spend that time just sitting outside, talking to you. The next 21 days, what would your life look like if, it was, if you did that? So today, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pray. And I want you to, to do a little soul searching, saying, God, what, what is it that you're calling me to? If you don't mind, maybe closing your eyes, bowing your heads, each person in this room. No one moving around or talking, just so there's no distractions, so you can have a, a quiet moment with God. Now let's pray together. Father, we come before you 
and we look for your favor. Not because of who we are, but because of who you are. Today, we put you in first place. You are the priority. You are the Lord of our life. And right now, right here in this moment, I officially launched 21 days of prayer and fasting and seeking you that we as a church, we're gonna pursue you. As individuals, we're gonna pursue you. As families, we will pursue you for the next 21 days, we're chasing after you. Now, if you're in this morning, still with your heads bowed and eyes closed, if you've not made God number one in your life, I'd like to pray a prayer that walks you through that, that journeys you through that. You can pray, quiet, quietly pray it right where you are. You can say something like this, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for not making you number one in my life before, but today I choose to make you number one, to make you the Lord of my life, that everything I do from this day forward, God, is yours. Thank you, Father, in your name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for joining us online today. If you prayed that prayer with us, we would like to help you on your spiritual journey. If you don't mind going to theshorechurch.com or emailing us at hello at theshorechurch.com, we can send you some information to start this spiritual journey of faith. And of course, we'd always love to see you in person at The Shore Church, 3375 Fruitvale Road.